Hey everybody, in today's video I'm going to go over how to create an accounts receivable aging report in Microsoft Excel. And so this can help you stay on top of your invoices, focus on the ones that need more of your attention such as the older ones versus ones that are newer and maybe you don't have to worry about just yet. So here I've got a list of customer name, invoice date, due date, and amount. So these are all the invoices I've got in my data set. And the first thing I'm going to do is convert this into a table. And the reason for that is it's going to be easier to create a named range based on this table and then reference that in a pivot table, thereby making it easier to update that pivot table and I don't have to uh, rearrange or adjust the, uh, adjust the range manually. And second of all, any formulas that I add will automatically be copied down to new entries. So it can s save you a bit of time in, in updating and avoiding common mistakes such as not copying your formulas or not extending your range, especially when you're working with pivot tables. So to convert this into a table, I'm going to go to the Insert tab, hit the Table button, and leave the option check to say My Table Has Headers. So it's applied as a default formatting. And now I'm going to go ahead and create a column, a create a field called Days Past Due. And for this calculation, I'm going to use an if function to say, okay, if the due date is past today, so I'm using the today function, then I'm going to return a value of zero, meaning it's not, not past due yet. Otherwise, I'm going to take today's date and subtract the due date to see, okay, how many days ahead am I in the future? Or how, how many uh, days past due is the invoice? So we can see, so... As I'm doing this video, these it's not yet June, so the this is zero days past due. This one is five days, this one is 422 days, because back in 2023. So you can see by, by just creating that one formula, it automatically copies it down in the table. And also the benefit of cr creating a table here is it's a lot easier to reference these ranges as opposed to um, selecting individual cells. I can just use um, just the entire field name. Now, another thing I need to do is create a field for the aging category. And what I'm going to do is create a lookup table over here. That's going to be the aging category and the description. So I'm going to do a simple lookup table. So if it's zero days, it's going to be current. If it's more than 30 days, it's going to be 30 plus days. If it's 60 days, 60 plus, 90 will be 90 plus, and let's even go to 120, 120 plus in case you wanted to um, go that far. So I'm gonna insert, and again, convert this into a table. And I'm gonna go back in this table and change this to call this my AR table. So now it's easy to reference it when I create my, my pivot tables. So now, for the aging category, I'm going to use a VLOOKUP function to say reference the days past due, and and then all of H and I'm going to use as my lookup range, and I'm going to set the column index to two because I want that that second column, and for the range lookup, I'm okay with an approximate match here because. I'm not going to have specific lookups for 422 days or 83 days, so I want it to look up based on approximate match so that it puts it into the right category. And so now I can see that if it's 422 days, it's 120 days past due. If it's 83, it falls in the 60 plus. If it's 84, it's still 60 plus. If it's 99, it's 90 plus. So it is calculating those um, classifications properly. Now that I've got that set up, the next thing I'm going to do is to create an actual pivot table using this data. So I'm going to insert a pivot table, and we've got our named range, our AR table. So when you're creating a pivot table without a named range, one of the drawbacks of doing so is, you know, you can lock in a range, let's say uh, row eight, um, row one to 500, and then the problem is you add invoices after that. And then you're going to have to go back and adjust the range. This is the benefit of using a table and using a named range so that it's dynamic and they'll automatically adjust. So I'm going to put this into a new worksheet and hit OK. And so I've got my table in here. So let's say I just wanted to pull in and see a breakdown of my aging category. So I'll put aging category in the rows and my amount will be in the value section. 
So that's a breakdown of my receivables right now. So I'm gonna change the way this looks. I'm gonna right click value field settings, change the number format so that it's a currency format, get rid of the decimals, hit okay. And so now we have a nice neat breakdown of our, of our receivables based on their category. Now the current one, it's text, so it doesn't put this in the right place, but I'm gonna resort this Z to A, there we go. So now, so now the sorting isn't exactly proper, but you can always fix this by dragging it. So rather than trying to, to figure out exactly what you want, you can sort of force it to put it in the exact category you want because this is text. These aren't actual numbers in here. So the sorting may not be exactly how, how you want it to be, but that's how, how we can force it. Now, let's say I want to break down by our, our customer. So I had customer data in here so I can show the receivable, the invoices based on customer. So what I'm going to do is drag the customer name, put it in the row category, in the row section, and the aging category, I'm going to move over to the columns. So now I've got a nice breakdown by customer of their current receivables, the 30 plus, 60 plus, 90 plus, 120, and their total and their grand total. So I get a nice snapshot of the receivables by the different customer. But now let's actually visualize this data and put it into a chart. So I'm gonna click on insert and open up charts here. And since I wanna show, I could show just a simple cluster chart like this, but the problem is we've got a lot of different um, columns in there. So in this case, a stacked column chart is gonna be really effective because now we can see those chunks. You can see how, how much the current uh, receivables are versus the 30, 60, 90, and 100 day amounts. So now I'm gonna hit okay. And now I've got my, my chart down here. Now, one thing I'm gonna do is just change the look of this a little bit. So if I go to the design tab or the pivot, the pivot, pivot chart analyze tab, I'm gonna get rid of those field buttons because I don't like the look of these gray buttons here. So I'm gonna get rid of that. And what I'm also gonna do is on the design tab, under add chart element, you can actually move, move the legend so it's at the bottom. I like putting it at the bottom just so it frees up a bit of space. There's more room for um, uh, my column charts to spread horizontally. And another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click format data series and change the gap width to just 50%. This again, eliminates more of that white space, white space and it makes it a lot easier to see um, the breakdown of, of these receivables. Now, another thing you may wanna consider doing is changing the color format of this. So if I go to the fill colors, now any, any receivables that are current, I'm gonna say, okay, those are green, as in, you know, they're, they're good, I don't need to worry about them. Let's put them to, let's set them to green. Right, and for the ones that are maybe um, 30 plus days old, not not terribly a big concern yet, so let's maybe do a, a darker shade of green to differentiate those a little bit. Once we're getting to 60 plus, we may say, okay, at, at this stage, we may want to start paying a bit closer attention to these, so maybe uh, a light orange, whatever color, perhaps a yellow. Yellow's a bit bright, but what we can do is if we like the color, but want to adjust a little bit, we can go to more colors, and then let's pick a bit of a lighter shade shade of yellow, just so it's not too bright on the screen. And so now we've got a nice faint yellow for that one. We could also do in this case is add a border. So we've got a bit of a border. So let's add a solid line. So if you wanted to, you could do a little gray border so it differentiates it a little bit. So it has a bit of an outline. And then once we get to 90, day, 90 days, perhaps make this one a let's say an orange color, or maybe a brighter orange than that. And then for the ones that are over 120 days, let's make those red just to make them stand out. So now we can get a nice visual of, okay, these are our receivables that are still okay. These are the ones that are starting to be problematic, right? So it gives you a good glimpse of not only the total receivables for that customer, but a breakdown of those receivables based on the categories. This is why I stacked chart can be really effective in this case because it gives you two different views. You can see the total amount, we can see the customer F has the most receivables in total, you know, but we can see that 
you know, let's say customer D has a, has a larger proportion of 60 plus day receivables versus this customer. So we can do a bit more of analysis in, in terms of that way. Now, what you may wanna do is if you do have a lot of customers and they can't all fit on a single chart, this is where slicers might be really helpful for you. So if we wanna add slicers, we can go back to the insert tab and select the option for a slicer and select customer name and okay. And now we've got a section for our slicers. So if for example, we, we had a lot of customers, we can't fit them all on this chart, we can just select, okay, I want customer B. Now this is a bit too wide, arguably for one customer, but if I wanna see multiple customers, I can hold down the control key and select customer C, customer E, and let's say customer G, and now I'm gonna release the control button, and now I see all these customers. So if you've got a lot of customers, that's one way where you can sort of toggle that information. And so to see exactly what you wanna look at. Now, another thing I may want to do is in designing this, I'm going to add a chart element for a data, data table with the legend keys. So now I get a bit more information here. So I get a breakdown in case I want to actually see the numbers associated with this. I don't actually have to go back into my table here to look at it. I get all that information on this chart. And then lastly, the one thing I may want to add is obviously a chart title above the chart. Let's call it aged AR schedule. Just to make it clear what this is, but by doing this, you know, we've got a clear glimpse of our receivables in an easy to, to see visual. We can see both visually in terms of um, the different, different colors to see how much of each category accounts for a customer's receivable. And we also got the data. Now, if you don't want the data, obviously you can get rid of that. And then you just have the chart, but by setting it up this way, you've got a lot of flexibility. And since we got it set up in a table, it makes it really easy to add to this, add to this list. Let's go back to sheet one and just make a change to, to demonstrate this. So right now we've got customer H here at the very bottom. And let's add customer, customer B. Let's add a really old invoice. So right now they've got 1360 in their over 120 days. So let's add customer B here. Let's add something really uh, way back, January 1, 2022. So something really old, and let's say the due date was January or April 1st, 2022. And let's say it was a huge invoice of $10,000. The reason I'm doing this is just to make it stand out so it's clear that we've added that in there. So now it hasn't updated here. So we've got 120 a days outstanding. So now if I go to the data tab and now hit refresh all, we should see that number jump up. So see, you can jump to 11,360. And so this is the effectiveness of using a table in here because, you know, over time you, you, you might add to this list and, you know, if you don't have it in a table format, you might think, oh shoot, I forgot to, to copy the formulas down or I forgot to update my range in my pivot table. But because my pivot table over here if I go to analyze, change data source, it's referencing that named range. I don't have to worry about that. It's always going to have that table reference. So if I add more items to it, then it's gonna automatically update. Because that's a really common issue. A common problem with pivot tables is you set it up perfectly, it's working correctly, but now your range isn't updated and you need to adjust that. That's where named ranges can be really effective um, with pivot tables and making sure you've got all the data even new, new items that you add. So a real, really good way to set that up. So once you create the pivot table, you know, create a chart and then use a stack chart, especially if you're using aging values and aging categories, and then it makes it more easy to display and visualize your data. So that's a wrap for this video. If you did like it, please make sure to leave a like and be sure to subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.